Here are beauty standards from around the world. Number 10, surgical bandages. Where would you suspect to be the nose job capital of the world? USA, UK, Western Europe? Try Iran. Yes, Iran. As a nation, Iran has a very high level of image consciousness in both men and women. Yet, the preferred method of showing this off is not only to undergo plastic surgery, but make it as obvious as possible that you actually had plastic surgery. The application of a surgical bandage across the nose is seen as a sign of high status. It's displaying that the wearer has the finances to work up to a higher level of beauty. Although, after going under the knife, a bandage is probably recommended, people with this obsession will often wear the bandage for much longer than needed. Can't afford a nose job, but want to make the same status? Not a problem, as many simply buy themselves a surgical bandage and place it over their nose anyway, regardless of whether they've had work done or not. Number 9. Metata Bali is home to a very traditional beauty technique known as metata, which roughly translates to teeth filing. There's a very strong belief that to have or to see people with sharpened teeth is extremely attractive. To be seen with large, natural, fang-like teeth symbolizes social well-being, spiritual well-being, and a serious appreciation for beauty. Overall, it's a symbol of self-confidence and form, a quality we're all told to express in any social occasion. Not that it always works, of course. It's also believed to be a ritual which is designed to rid the person's body and mind of jealousy, sadistic ideas, and uncontrollable urges or anger. The people of Bali associate teeth with similar issues as the seven deadly sins, which is why, although the procedure can be simply carried out by dentists, it's often performed as a glamorous ceremony where family and friends are invited to come and watch the teeth filing take place. Number 8. Scarification Where many think of tattooing as simply injecting ink under the skin, Ethiopian and Sudanese tribes have been creating their own body art with permanent scars for thousands of generations. Scarification, also known as self-scarring, is seen as an alluring feature on the body. Self-scarring can be practiced absolutely anywhere on the body. It's often first carried out during puberty as a symbol of coming of age. Many choose to create an eye-catching pattern around the belly button, but some decide to go for the chest, arms, hands, and even face. Some even really go for it and cover themselves head to toe in these eye-catching scar patterns. A simple straight line scar, as many of us familiarize, uh, simply won't do. The designs and the results can be absolutely unbelievable. Hours and hours of self-inflicted pain and hard work pays off with extremely detailed, precise patterns and symbols. The art is carried out on bare skin with a small blade for maximum detail. Some go to such extremes that they can master the skill of completely reshaping the skin, giving a textured design. This doesn't only represent sexuality, but also strength, maturity, and discipline to the rest of the tribe. It's very unlikely it'd catch on in the Western world, but I'm gonna have to say the results are quite spectacular. Number seven, skin bleach. While many of us thrive for a bronzed, sun-kissed tan throughout the year, much of Eastern Asia has a very different idea. Pure, pale skin on women has been the desired appearance of many people in Asia. Thousands of years ago, royal maids known as geishas in China, Thailand, and Japan would have their faces powdered and painted a brilliant white. This was to represent purity and innocence to whomever they were serving or entertaining. With this long-running tradition in mind, pale skin in this part of the world is still extremely sought after. The level of whiteness that ladies from Asia desire is often that of the traditional geishas. Thus, face bleach has become increasingly popular in the beauty market. This is a recent trend in Chinese cosmetics. A level of specially designed bleach is added to face creams and moisturizers which will not only eventually pale and whiten the skin, but is also said to remove freckles and other imperfections for a near resemblance of that world-famous geisha look. Number 6. Double Eyelid Surgery the double eyelid surgery is a plastic surgery that's extremely popular in Japan and South Korea. The operation seems to be a result of the types of people being highly influenced by the Japanese and South Korean pop culture. This practice is a cosmetic procedure which involves altering the shape of the eye and the structure of the eyelid, making the eyes wider and bolder. 
There are, of course, many people in Asia with natural double eyelids. However, single eyelids are much more common in the Eastern world. Many girls who undergo this practice are often criticized for trying to stop looking Asian. Much of this is influenced by Japanese pop idols and models. A majority of young women carry this look in the hope that they'll seem more approachable to Western pop culture. Plus, it's yet another status symbol demonstrating healthy living, as well as being a bold but subliminal statement of, oh, look at me, I'm on the road to gaining true beauty. Number five, long necks. Throughout Thailand and Myanmar, particularly those of the Kayan tribe on the Thai-Myanmar border, a long, slender, giraffe-like neck is seen as a sign of regality and elegance in women. Girls first start to wear rings when they are around five years old. Over the years, the coil is replaced by a longer one and more turns are added. The weight of the brass pushes the collarbone down and compresses the rib cage. The neck itself is actually not lengthened, but the appearance of a stretched neck is created by the deformation of the clavicle. As the years go by, more and more heavy brass ring coils are added up the girl's neck until an incredible weight of up to 22 pounds of metal is coiled around the young girl's neck. The long neck women of Thailand have become renowned throughout the world. Because of their unusual appearance to different cultures, they often find themselves simply being a human exhibit for Western tourists. The government of Myanmar began discouraging neck rings as it was trying to appear more modern to the developed world. Consequently, many women in Myanmar began breaking the tradition, though a few older women and some of the younger girls in remote villages continued to wear rings. In Thailand, the practice has gained popularity in recent years because it draws tourists who bring revenue to the tribe and to the local businessmen who run the villages and collect an entry fee of 500 to 600 baht per person, which translates to around $20 US. Number four, South Korean male vanity. Men in South Korea are globally known for their healthy skin. They could potentially be some of the vainest image conscious men on the planet. Well, in Asia at least. In many parts of the world, masculine beauty is classed with muscular tones and avoiding many cosmetics which could be implied as products aimed at women. But in South Korea, male vanity spins this theory right around. Rather than aiming to be overly stocky or ripped, soft features with a particularly slight muscle tone is the trend. Sounds fairly rational so far, don't it? But when it comes to facial vanity, they take it slightly more seriously. To appear youthful and active in South Korea is considered extremely attractive, so high levels of makeup and facial cosmetics aimed at men have swamped the shelves. Mascara, lipstick, and foundation are must-have products for most men in the country, and a lot of men take it extremely seriously. But the male vanity doesn't stop there. Men in South Korea also are very reliant on plastic surgery, aiming for a smaller, pointier nose and wider eyes. If this is pulled off successfully, you can end up a highly popular and attractive gentleman. Hmm, interesting. Number three, Tamoko. Tamoko is an ancient traditional style of facial tattoos. New Zealand's Maori people regard this as a sacred art of personal beauty. Originally, the artwork was applied to the face, often mainly the chin for women, by chiseling the skin with a small, sharp, homemade chisel and a miniature mallet. Traditionalists still fully stand by this method, whereas some followers of the fashion try to mimic the design by modern tattoo methods. The skin indentations are styled in a particular pattern which are then filled with the dye. The lips are also colored along with the face decorations. In Maori tradition, men and women both use these unique tattoos to symbolize specific statuses. For women, tamoko is used to imply strength and fertility as well as beauty and pride. For men of the Maori tribe, it is in place to symbolize readiness for adult duties. Each design is unique to the wearer, giving them their own definition for their design and the flow of the pattern. To look at now, you could easily think it was simply a modern day tattoo, but that just goes to show how influential the Tomoko is. Number two, lip plate. The famous lip plate is considered a symbol of extreme beauty in the Mercy tribe in Ethiopia. It's also there to represent a desire to be accepted by a man of the tribe to possibly marry. The women of the tribe wear their lip plate on a daily basis. Once they reach puberty or their late teens, the process begins. 
Though the plate is started by creating a small hole in the girl's lower lip with a small stick or twig. To leave a space for the plate to sip, often two of the lower teeth are also removed. Yeah, that doesn't sound too fun. Not really as simple or pain-free as adding a little lipstick or something. As time goes by, the hole is stretched to an amazing size, sometimes the same radius as an average soup bowl. The largest lip plate recorded was an Ethiopia measuring 23.4 inches in circumference and 7.6 inches wide in 2014. The plate is often made of wood or clay and each decorated with a unique design. The more eye-catching the plate, the more alluring and desirable the woman in question will be seen. This traditional act of vanity has been in practice within the tribe for many centuries. Tragically, many of these women were kidnapped and put in exhibitions in many circuses in the U.S. in the late 19th century. Number 1. Le Bleu This one sounds more like a medieval form of torture than a beauty procedure to many of us. It's a bit like the super skinny obsession in most Western cultures, but in complete reverse. In Mauritius, obesity in women is seen as a status symbol and most likely to attract a rich, successful husband. Obesity represents wealth, healthy living, and wholesomeness to the husband, displaying to all that he can provide well and is successful in his job or in the bedroom. Girls as young as 10 are sent away to fat farms and are put under a strict practice known as le bleu, which is basically intensive force feeding. It's a very strict process in many fat farms. Girls can sometimes even be beaten with canes or have their feet stamped if they refuse to eat anymore. The girls are force-fed a diet of goat's milk, oily couscous, and ground millet with water, among other things. Eventually, their bodies expand and bulge out like beach balls. All this in the hope that they will be able to wed a successful, handsome husband in the future. Thankfully, these fat farms are now a dying breed. However, it is still practiced in certain areas of the world. Here's what's next. Fitness model. She was a phenom at a young age. She broke a number of American records for high school pole vaulting. She, however, became an internet phenomenon, not for her pole vaulting, but for being ridiculously good looking. When pictures of her pole vaulting in high school were widely shared, pictures of Allison were taken by a journalist.